فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم The author now, <coughs> he goes into alamat al-fa'li. Ah, uh, sorry. Huruf al-khafdi. Wa hiya min wa ila wa an wa ala wa fi wa rubba wa alba wa al-kaf wa al-lam wa huruf al-qasami wa hiya al-wa'u wa alba wa ta'u. The fourth sign that the author talks about is huruf al-khafdi. Huruf al-khafdi are basically particles that enter into the noun and when they enter into the noun they make the noun become kasra at the ending of it so when and they were the ones that we were talking about before when we were categorizing the huruf what was the one that we mentioned muhtasun bil asma which is specific to what nouns it's huruf al-khaf huruf al-khaf is a distinct Particles that only enter into what? They only enter into what? They enter into Asma nouns. Are you with me, brothers? They only enter into Al Asma. And the author then mentions what are they? Min. That's the first one. Min, what does it mean? The author mentions um, Min. What does min mean? Min means from. It's where you use the word min from somewhere. And the ila, which is to. Okay? So, for example, you will say, to min al masjidi ila al manzili. I came from the masjid and I came to the house. I came to the masjid. to min al masjid. I came from the masjid to the house. Are you with me, brothers? So, min al masjidi from the masjid. Il al manzili. Now, look at the word al masjidi. You put a kasra there. Il al manzili. You put a kasra there. What made it do that? The min and the ila, which was before both of them. The, if I now ask you al masjid, what is it? It's a what? Is it isim or is it fi'l or is it har? Is it was it the deal? An elephant, one, two. Half the one, which is the cutter here, Ms. GD, third. Horrorful half this before. So we have three signs to say that Al Ms. GD is a noun. Il Al Menzili, Al Menzili is a noun or a verb or a particle. And now evidence the deal. Three that we mentioned for masjid, which were Al Huruf al Khafdi, which is Ila that went before it, and the Khafd that's there. Good. See how you're identifying it. Then the author says, Wa'an. What does the word An show? Wa takulu lil mujawara. An shows mujawara. Basically, uh, neighboring together. Said. Okay, when some things are basically together, stuck together, it's called it. Or they're, te or they're together. Or it can also be used as bond. Something goes far. When something goes far, it's said. For example, you say, رَمَيْتُ السَّهْمَ عَلِ الْقَوْسِ I threw the arrow from the bow. رَمَيْتُ السَّهْمَ عَلِ الْقَوْسِ I threw the arrow from the bow. But the word an here is not from, but English we have to say from, so it means it makes meaning. But the word an here shows two things: that the arrow when it came out of the bow, that they both stuck, to, they were together one time, they were neighboring. Are you with me? And now one has detached itself from it. That's what the word an shows. Second thing it shows is that the arrow goes far, and the word an shows that meaning. Burd, something very go, going very far. Are you with me? So when you say رَمَيْتُ السَّهْمَ عَنِ الْقَوْسِ أَيْ أَيْ أَبْعَدْتَهُ وَعَلَى is also what the author used. عَلَى is, is used for استعلاء 
is to be high of something, above something. So you say, for instance, Rakibtu alal farasi. I climbed, I mounted the horse. Al farasi, horse. Are you with me, brothers? The word ala is on, above. Okay? So when Allah uses in the Quran, Al Rahman wa alal. Alal arsh istawa, it shows what? Allah is above the throne. Where is the evidence for ala? Arabic. Just Arabic language. The word fi shows darfiya. Darfiya means what? That something is in something. Inside. So you say al ma'u, the water is fi al kuzi. It's in the jug or see that? Fi in. The, word, the author used the word rubba. Rubba is used for the meaning of takthir. A lot does this happen. Does that happen? And it can also be used for the opposite, which is little. So something you want to show that it happens a lot, you can say, rubba rajulin bakhilin laqitu. So here means rubba. A lot do I meet a poor, a stingy person. There are more stingy people there are than there are generous people, right? So the word rubba here means takthir. A lot does that happen. And it can also be used in the opposite, which is little. And what distinguishes one from the other is the context. Are you with me? So for example, we say, وَرُبَّ رَجُلٍ كَرِيمٍ وَجَدْتُهُ A little. Do I come across a generous person? So the word rubba is used when you want to say something rarely happens or when you want to say something happens a lot. Then the author brings the word ba. ba. The word ba is used for transmission. Transmission. When you want to transmit. <coughs> for example, you say farihtu bi Mahmoodin. I became happy with Mahmood. The author then used the word kaf. The kaf is tashbih, resembling one with something else. If you want to basically compare two things, you use the kaf. For example, you say, Aliyun kal badri. Aliyun. Ali is kal badri. Ali is like the moon, full moon. I'm comparing Ali with the moon. And the lamb here that the author is talking about is one of two meanings that he carries. It is lamb al milkiyah, the lamb of ownership. So, for example, you can say, Al-Malu li Khalidin, the wealth is owned by Khalid. Or, brothers, it can be Ikhtisas. Ikhtisas is to specify something. So, for, you, for example, you can say, Al-Jullu lil Farasi. Al-Jullu lil Farasi. And the word al-jullu is what you, it's, the, it's, it's called the rain that you put in the horse. It's for the horse. I mean, it's specific for the horse. You can't use that for anyone or anything else except the horse. Are you with me? Then the author mentions after that three extra types of huruf, which he says they are called huruf al-qasabi. Huruf al-qasabi are what you guys see the Somalians do a lot. Wallahi. Billahi. Tallahi. They do that, right? Especially in football. Wallahi billah is mine. And when he really wants the ball, he goes, Wallahi billah tallahi is mine. And they somebody has been using this so much that even the kuffar do it now. As well, careful playing with somebody's football. And he was say, Wallahi billah tallahi is mine. What's over? He said, even the Muslims again. Yeah, they taught him. He learned it. He realized when, they, when he says that, they pass the ball quickly and they do the job properly, yeah, or else they won't. The point is, what happens? Look when you say, Wallahi, Billahi, Tallahi. Are you with me, brothers? Are we together? So, uh, Wallahi, you place a kasra on there. Where is that kasra coming from? So, the, these huruf, Wallahi, Billahi, Tala, are huruf al khafdi but the reason the author added an extra meaning to it for you to understand. They are known as huruf al-khafdi and it's qasam as well. They are all oaths. 
but they do the job of huruf uh, al Same. The only difference is this: this these three are distinct for when you when you want to make an oath, but there are difference between each one. Pay attention. Many people don't know the difference. The wow, it only enters into ism which is lahir, a apparent noun. And I already told you guys what apparent noun is. Wallahi can only enter it. Wa shamsi. Shamsi is a ism which is lahir, an apparent noun. It enters it. Good. Are you with me, brothers? Crystal clear? The bad lacking, it enters onto a ism lahir. And it is similar. You can use it for both. Are you with me? For example, what you can say is "Okusimu billahi." You can say, "You can say that billahi." Allah comes after, which is an apparent noun. Or you can say "Okusimu ha bihi," and use a ha instead of Allah. It enters both. It accepts both. Are you with me? But you can't say "Okusimu wallahi." You can't say that, but you can't say Uqsimu waka. Are you with me? Waka here means the kaf is going to be you, O oh Allah. It can't enter any now, any pronoun. The world doesn't accept the pronoun. Are you with me, brothers? The ta, on the other hand, it only enters onto Allah alone. It doesn't accept any isim ba'il, and it doesn't accept any isim uthmar. Only Allah. You, Tallah is only used for Allah. You can't say Tashamsi. I'm a Tamkabari. Did Allah ever use that? The Ta is specific for him alone. Are you with me? Even it doesn't enter Ar Rahman or Ar Rahim or Al Malik, Al Quddus, these other names. That Lafdul Jalal, Allah only. Tallah. You can't say Tar Rahmani. Are you with me, brothers? That's the difference between the three. Crystal clear? Crystal clear? Hey, for brother. Well, fair enough. The author had finished speaking about the signs of the noun, right? He's now going into the signs of a signs of a verb. The author mentioned <coughs> how many signs? He mentioned four here again. He mentions Qat, which is the first one. And then he mentions after that, seen. And then after that he mentions uh, sofa, which is the third. And then the fourth which he mentions is ta So he mentions four signs for the noun. Okay, four signs. Now, the qad, how many verbs, how many verbs do we have? Because what, what, what's the sign of what, what, what are we talking about here right now? The signs of what? The signs of a? Yeah. How many types of verbs are there for us? Three. 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 Good. When we look at these signs, we have to know, is it for all of the three? Or is it specific to some? We have to know that. So the Qad, which is the first one that the author mentioned, it enters onto the past verb. Qad enters past verb. So Mabi. It enters the Mabi. And it also enters... The Mubarak, which is the present verb. Are you with me, brothers? <coughs> it only enters onto those two. That's the Qad. What's the second sign that the author mentions? Seen. Seen only enters the present verb. Seen only enters the third Mubarak. Good. The third sign that the author mentions, which is? So fat. So far enters what? Only the mubari, which is that present verb. Are you with me, brothers? And the ta itanith sakina only enters the the mother, which is a past tense verb. Now here is a question: What happened to the miskin amar? None of the signs were done for it, right? Are you with me? There's, that's why scholars they say there's another book that comes after this book which adds on to the things it missed. It's called Mutamima. 
Its job is just to complete what Ajlimiya left out. One thing that's missing here. Is that fair that you tell all the others but you don't tell the Mudda'amadi, Amr? And you leave it out in the cold by itself. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? No. So that book is going to tell us. So we don't talk about it. We don't mention it. Are you with me? But you know this, the Amr is missing here. Okay, now let's go back to the first one, which is Qad. Qad enters the Mudaya Mardi and it enters the. It enters the Mardi and it enters the what? Mudaya. I'm now going to start using those terms now. I'm not going to use. Mardi means past tense. Mudaya means present tense. You should know that by now. So, Qad enters both of them, does it not? It enters both of them. But when it enters both of them, what does it do? What's the meaning? The meaning is that when it enters the past tense, it shows two meanings. When it enters into the ma'abi, the past tense, it shows two meanings. The first meaning that it shows is at-tahqiq. At-tahqiq. Which means, who can help me here with the translation? Surely, right? Yeah, it shows that surety of something, that it's definite, concrete, it's going to happen. That's the one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses. Qad aflah al mu'minun. Qad aflaha. Aflaha is a maadi. Qad went before it. This qad means litahqiq. It's surely. It's definitely. It's 100% that the believers are going to find success. But with conditions. With conditions. Allah then mentions what the conditions are. The first condition which Allah mentions was what? الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ That's something one Muslim, a Muslim should ask himself. That when he prays the Salah, am I a person who when he prays his prayer, I have khushu. If you don't come with these conditions, the the the, 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 the qad that was mentioned here for the falah, is not going to be for you because the Sharia is stipulated to these conditions. When the Dalek Surah Mu'minun is called Mu'minun because it talks about Sifatil Mu'minin, the characteristics of the what? The characteristics of the believer. So when you claim Iman, your Iman is going to be put to the test. Okay, let's check it out. Is it real? So we're going to find out this deficiency in your Iman. Are you with me, brothers? There's going to be what? Deficiency on your, on your what? And the Salaf who had the Ummah. Like it was mentioned, Hussein ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu, whenever he would do wudu, his face would turn pale. Change, the color would change. And it would be said to him, why, why, why is your color changing, your complexion? Why is it changing for? And the response he would give is that, I am now going to stand in front of Allah. I'm now going to go and stand in front of Allah, worried, concerned. Basically, he feels it, right? Are you with me, brothers? It was said Muslim Ibn, Muslim Ibn Yasar was praying Salah and his house, part of it collapsed, <laughs> broke down. His pillar broke. And he was, was in the house praying. And as he was praying, it collapsed. The people heard about it. It's the whole house that collapsed. People came running. They spoke to him. They uh, um, conversed with him. He's not responding. In the middle of the prayer, he finished the salah and he said, What happened? And they told him, He said, It collapsed. He didn't know at all. Why would it be like that, though? And it's a characteristic Allah praised the believers for. إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ وَيَدْعُونَ لَا رَغَبًا وَرَهَبًا وَكَانُوا لَنَا خَاشِئِينَ لَوْ أَنزَلْنَا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَى جَبَلٍ لَرَأَيْتَهُ خَاشِعًا مُتَصَدِّعًا مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ And then Allah says, وَتِلْكَ الْأَمْثَالُ نَضْرِبُهَا لِلنَّاسِ That the mountain who's harder than your heart actually has khushu' The mountain has more khushu' than your heart. Isn't that shocking? Allah says, Khashi'an. You find the mountain, if the Quran came down on it, the mountain will find khushu'. And you find no khushu' in your prayer. You need to be worried. 
So you're not going to find and you're not going to attain the success that the ayah is talking about. Are you with me, brothers? You're not going to. You're not going to. So that's why the qalb here is tahqiq, but it's with its conditions. And the second meaning that it shows is taqrib. Second meaning that it shows is taqrib, close. If you use the word qad, in a fair mudara, it shows that something has come close. And it's, one, it's the one that's used for the iqama. Qad qamati salah. Qad qamati salah when the, the mu'adhin says. Are you with me, brothers? Qad qamati salah means what? What's, the, what's he trying to say to you? Ay qaruba. Ay qaruba. The salah time has come close. Yeah, it's one of the meanings. Those are the two meanings that it holds when it's used in a mubariah. Now the, sorry, maldi. When it's used in the maldi. Now we're going to move on to when it's used in the mubariah. When it's used in the mubariah, it has two meanings. The first one is at-taqlil little. And we spoke about the word rubba, remember? It shows takhir and it shows taqlil, which is when qad is used in a mubariah, it shows taqlil, little does this happen. Little. Are you with me? Brothers, are we together? Little. For example, qad yanjuhu al-balidu. Balid is what? Uh, it's the dumbo. The balid, he can be successful, he can pass a test. Is that a lot or is that little? Little. So here when I said قَدْ يَنْجُحُ It is possible. Sorry, قَدْ يَنْجَحُ Sorry. قَدْ يَنْجَحُ الْبَلِيدُ And the بَلِيد Dumbo. He could pass the test and be successful and be victorious and you know pass the test. It could be. But it's little. That really doesn't happen a lot, does it? Or else he wouldn't have been a Dumbo. In the, yeah. He wouldn't have been. Number two, which is تَكْثِيرُ the takhir means a lot does it happen. For example, is قَدْ يَفْهَمُ الذَّكِيُّ قَدْ يَفْهَمُ الذَّكِيُّ The smart one may understand. Is that a lot or is it little? The reason why he's called smart is because the majority of the times he understands, right? You with me, brothers? So قَدْ يَفْهَمُ الذَّكِيُّ The smart one may understand. It may, he may understand. That's finished now. Those are the two meanings that he has. And that is takhir, a lot. That's the clear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see a lot, Muhammad. Huh? I mean, we see a lot, and it was very common, and it was a lot that the Prophet would turn his eyes. Huh? That the Prophet would turn his eyes to the sky a lot. And Allah is trying to say, A lot, do you see Muhammad turning your eyes to the sky? It was a lot that the Prophet used to do this. Why would he do that? He was waiting for revelation to come down and to tell him to turn away from Bayt al-Maqdis and to turn towards the Kaaba, which his heart was connected to. So Allah is saying to him, Allah, do we see you, Muhammad? Yeah, that you keep putting your, sky, your eyes up to the sky so the revelation could come down and that you could be turned towards the Kaaba. You see, the word now, seed and sofa, is the next word. Now, see the sofa, we're going to mention them together because for two reasons. They show the same meaning, or they show roughly the same meaning, and the second one is that they both enter the same, same verb, or the same tense. They both enter the mubadah, the present tense. Are you with me? They're specific to the, seven, uh, the, the present uh, tense. Present tense. What do they both show? Future. Are you with me, brothers? When we speak about when we speak about the fair, 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 fair and mudari, it is timing. But what does it show? Future. So seed is future and sofa is what? Future. What's the difference between the two? Seed you said it's future. And sofa you said it's future. What's the difference? <laughs> which one's which was far, which one is not? So sofa is more is a further 
few chances. So long distance future so far. Seed is what? Hey, how did you get to that conclusion? Because we know Revelation stopped when the Prophet died, right? So how do you know? I think he mentioned last time when he has more letters. What do you mean? Allah Akbar. The principle according to the grammarians is the Qa'idah called Qa'idah. Remember I said Qawaid, you memorize it. It is Kathratul Bina'i. Kathratul Bina'i. The letters becoming more Tadullu ala Kathratil Ma'na Ghaliban. Seed is one letter. So if it's three letters, so if it has to show a bigger meaning than this because it's got more letters. It's the Qa'idah. Seed is one letter. So if it's three letters, so kathratul mabna ama kathratul hurufi all of them will say that it shows ex more letters show more meaning deeper meaning ghaliban why do you say ghaliban? majority of the times majority of the times the reason is because the qa'idah here is not qa'idah muttaridah what is me saying that the kalam is three types. This qa'idah mutalida. You will never be able to get out of that. See, but he couldn't do that. He couldn't find a fourth one. Ahmed Khalil bin Ahmed al-Farahidi, Sheikh Sibu, he couldn't find that. Amr ibn al-Ala, who is the Imam in Aymat al-Qiraat and Imam in the language, they couldn't find a fourth one. So if they could, I'm sure you won't find it. This is qa'idah mutalida. Does that make sense, brothers? But this one, is not more polida. We found times, times that letters were more, but it showed less meaning than the one that had less letters. Does that make sense? But this is the majority of the time. Are you with me, brothers? <coughs> then the author mentions, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he mentions the last one, which is Ta'u Ta'nithi Sakina. Ta'u Ta'nithi Sakina, it consists of three points. First of all, it's ta. Third, second is Ta'neeth, feminine. Fourth is Sakinah, it has Sukun. So the Ta' we're looking for has to have those three conditions, or those three points. It has to be Ta' number one. So it can't be Ba, it can't be Jeem, it can't be Alif, it has to be Ta'. Two, it has to be Ta'neeth, feminine. So if you find a Ta' that's masculine, that's something else, we're not talking about it here. Third, is that that Ta' has to have Sukun. If you find a Ta' that doesn't have a sukun, it's not ta ta niti sakina. With me? Eye to eye? Are you with me? So the word qalat, she said. Is that ta qalat is the word? And then we have qalat, qalat, qalat. Okay, is that ta here? Ta at ta at sakina. Is it? Why is it? Because it's ta, feminine, and it has a sukun on it. Good. Pay attention here. You guys just said that, right? So it's a feminine. We're talking about a woman said. Qala is a man said. Qalat is a woman said. Good. Are you with me, brothers? Take the same word. And now let's put it into a sentence. Allah said in the Quran, وَقَالَتِ امْرَأَةُ الْعَزِيزِ وَقَالَتِ وَقَالَتِ امْرَأَةِ الْعَزِيزِ امْرَأَةِ الْعَزِيزِ The wife of the Aziz. We have the word قَالَتْ She said. It's ta. It's ta means because it's talking about امرأة. It clearly says it there, right? But the ta hasn't got a sukun on it. So is it ta is secular? Yeah? Who believes it is? Good. Who believes it's not? Who doesn't know what on earth is happening here? Good. The ta here is ta ta 
But why is it got no sukun on it? This is a kaida you need to memorize. See? With this kaida you know something especially happened here. And that is iltiqa'u <coughs> sakirayn. They feared that two sukuns will meet each other. If you say qalat, how are you going to say it? You know what they said? I don't know. I'm just transmitting what I heard. Don't quote me for it. Those of you who can actually speak it, know it. I don't know it. I'm just sad. I'm basically blind following of something I had. I heard the only language that can actually basically speak with two sukuns is Sawahili. Is that right? If you know it, don't expose me. Tell me privately later. Okay? If I'm wrong. Let me just look right, okay, right now, okay? Are you with me, brother? Okay. Good. So, <laughs> they said that the, how, many people say to you, they'll answer right now if I ask them. But if I ask them, how is it, can explain it to me? A lot of people will be confused and unable to explain it to me. Shall I show you? There's many people that put their hands up, right? I'm now going to ask them, explain to the audience and the mass why is it Ah, huh? Should I put them on the spot? I actually just do it myself. Yeah? Put them on the spot. Because they thought they were tough, right? Put their hands up like they know and making the other brothers look bad, yeah? Put them on the spot, like, right? Do it, yeah? Yeah, yeah. A bucket, you put your hand up. You did it. You're not retracting it. Uh, yeah. You need to put your hand up, I saw you. You did fumble. Jamil, explain it to us. Explain is different to just tell us. Students want to understand, brother. Yeah, go ahead. And the way it is, no shame. Explain it to us. No, don't confuse us. Hey, what is it? What happened here? Qala Tim. So it used to be Qalat, hey yeah. After it came Alif Lam. Alif Lam came. Alif Wasli. The Alif Wasli is actually to connect it. So it's when you're uttering it, you drop it. The Qaeda is what? Tum taku fi awal al kalimi wa taskutu fi atla al kalami. When you're starting with Alif Wasli, you always mention it. In talaqa. You say it. You see, you have to say it now because it's the beginning of, of the word now. But if it was what? Muhammadunin, Muhammadunin. I'm not going to say the alif. Alif al wasli, his job is to connect. It is, as they say, you showing that you are a foreigner. When you say Muhammad, in Balaka, that's strong. What do you just do? Are you with me, brothers? It's weakness in the language when you pronounce an alif al wasli fi athra'il kalami in the middle of the speech. You connect them. Is it like that in the Quran as well? Yeah. Am I right? I don't want to speak about fitness, so my brothers in the Quran. I am a Quran in the field. Yeah. I'm going to reference them a lot. Shah Abdul Rizak is the Imam of the Masjid. Shah Abdul Rizak. He doesn't like to be pointed out, but that's what I like to do with. I like to put people in the spotlight. Yeah. <laughs> um, so now you said to us, Qalat Imra. This alif is really there to connect. So when you're going to pronounce, it won't be mentioned. So it's basically doing nothing right now. So we're left with the lamb. What's on top of the lamb? Sukun. So the sukun of the lamb and your qalat are meeting each other. Are you with me? So who had to give up? Yeah? The Tao Tanith gave what? And I think there's a qira'ah, if I'm not wrong, qalat tumrat al aziz, is there? Yeah? Is there a qira'ah? Shabbat 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 doesn't exist. If you don't know it, it doesn't exist, I'm telling you. <laughs> we'll take it as a subtle note that it doesn't exist. Ah. Hey, let's go back, edit that. So I take that out. Okay. Qalat tim. The Tim here, the Qala Tim, Ratil Aziz. No, Qala Tukhruj. 
قال تخرج صح اذا نذكر صح عند ذاك اوكي اي نو سمثينغ از ذير اي ام شور بس اي ويل اي تيك ات باك ام لوكينغ يو ماتش فانا ذا بوينت از سام تايمز ات داز هابن ات تيكس ا كسره سام تايمز ات تيكس ا ات تيكس اي بامبا انا هايلي شور ات قال تخرج از كام ات قال تخرج از كام ام شور ام 90 اون ذس It should be looked into. It's a qira'ah like that. Walau kana shadhan. Even if it's a qira'ah which is shadh, you still have to give my, 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 my statement some validity. That being said, that's the reason why. Have you guys understood? Understood? Now, so two sukoons are going to meet and in Arabic two sukoons can't be. So who tolerated? Okay, now tell you, I'm going to give you another qaida. Why did it take a kasara other than a fatha or a dhamma? Should we go into that or should we just leave that? Lima, we accept it. The iltiqa is circulated, it tolerated the sukoon, it doesn't accept that anymore. It can't take it. So we took kasara. Why kasara? It had three other choices it could have taken. And fatha, dhamma. Why kasara specifically? Is there a reason? Is there a wisdom behind it? Look at the word before. Where which one? Or, 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 the, or the letter before. Which is the letter before? Qala tib. You say imra, the alif. The alif al wasi. We'll edit out, don't worry, inshallah, we'll be taken out. <laughs> hey, yeah. Maybe because uh, the Arabs they want to. Because when you say qala tib, you put less effort. Hey, have you looked? Have you looked up? Okay. Look for me. Hey, the reason I'll tell you what it is is that if the third letter imra'a, the third letter alif al wasli, so forget forget, forget the alif al wasli. Alif al wasli is to connect. So we lam, mim, and then with what? Ra. Are you with me? What do you have? The third letter is a what here? Is a ra. What's the alam on there? Fatha. If it has a fatha on it, or a kasra on it, if it's got a fatha, the third letter, fatha or a kasra, then it becomes tikhruj. It is a kasra. Are you with me? And if the third letter is a bamba, then it becomes tu'u. So that's why I said قال تخرج رج. I was using it. And if it was they said they add it, add on to it sometimes, and sometimes they don't accept it as a count. That's another that's another mabhat that we need to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So hey, hey, let's use the principle I said. Hey. So isn't it that that is kasra? Okay. So shouldn't that be minted? So al is three letters. And if the wasl is part of the al right? Okay. Lam, dal. The dal has got what's it called in there? Kasra. So the third letter is going to be a kasra. Bin al If it's got a fatah on there, it's also going to be a kasra. The sukun is going to turn. I'm saying min. Min is min al Ha. Min al Ha. What is the solution? The noon is fatah. Oh, you mean min al Oh, see, that's my point, sorry. The, the first one is that if the third letter is this, if the letter, the third letter is either a kasra or a fatha, it takes a kasra. If it's a fatha, it can take a fatha. It can take a fatha. If it's a dhamma, that's the only one that the grammar is, except it has to be a dhamma. Ayya Shabd Rizal Taliq. Fadal. When it's fatah, it's only kasra. هذا عند الكوفيين مصريين والنهت هذا ما يبلي بزوجه من لغاتهم. That's what they said. It's a قول which is مشهور. See the way he mentions it. خليلي من كتاب العين. هذا كذا ودي نتا ميا. يا شا. No, we want it. It's benefit. Benefit. We need it. Is there a reason why? This is strictly no. One second.
שקל. אוקיי? אני לא מבין איזה בית, אני אסמרייז, בית. That he mentions Khalili in his kitab, his mention kitab al-Ain. I know it. I don't think we will go that deep. But I'll get it, inshallah ta'ala, tomorrow. Even in that. Duri. Allah. Ucht. Qala tukhruj. Ah, sah. Wal-fi'lu yu'rafu biqad. Wal-seel. Wal-sawfa. Wal-ta'ita liti sakina. Good. So it's the Qiraah of Duri, right? Ayyah Fadl. The only issue is... So the last one is Harf. Brothers, the last one is Harf. The last one is a harf. Harf is, as Hariri mentions in his work, when harf ma laysa lahu alama, faqis alama akulu, takun alama. What does he say in your thought, in your... Faqis ala qawliya. Naam. When harf ma laysa lahu alama. Harf is that which does not have a sign. Faqis ala qawli, my statement. Take that, take my statement on board. Okay, Takun Alama, you're going to be a what? You're going to be Alama, a person of knowledge. Alama, right? Pay attention to this, brothers. How can something exist and not have anything? You guys are saying harf is something that doesn't have no sign. So, how does it exist? They say to you, well, harf is what? That's what Hariri is saying, right? Harf is that which does not have a sign. So how can something exist and not have a sign? That's oxymoron. Huh? So it means here that it doesn't have a sign doesn't mean unrestrictedly. It means the signs of the noun and the signs of the verb. The signs of the noun and the, si the signs of the Verb. 